So as, as I was writing my book, uh, Age of Context, I was thinking about how uh, uh, sensors and social networks and location data are going to be used to serve us, like with this Google Glass that I'm wearing. But uh, I really didn't look too much into gaming. And gaming has such a hold on human people, on humans. You know, we love to play games, and that, that'll get us to put a lot more data into the game. And now we can start seeing a new kind of real world game. And that's what we're going to talk to about um, with your extra life right now uh, a new kind of real world game that collects data about you as you play the game. <laughs> Who are you? Hey, I'm Phil. Uh, I'm the CEO of Your Extra Life. And uh, I have a background in advertising, actually. I'm not exactly a technical guy. I also have a small uh, background in computer science and also in linguistics. And uh, well, I was writing a blog and I was thinking a lot about gamification. And at some point, we decided it would be cool to get people to try new things. And this is how, uh, how the story started. Yeah, new, when you say new things, you mean like go to a new restaurant or try a new bar or, or something like that? Yeah, so, some stuff like that. The whole point of it is that we were bored. Like we're young professionals, we just started our career and we felt like every week was becoming the same. We will always go to the same place with the same people, always cook the same recipes, always watch the same TV series. Even our couples were getting like into that routine. And we felt like it will be cool just to try new things all the time. And we felt like life had so much to offer and I don't know, we were not exactly like playing it the good way. And we decided to get people to try new things because we felt like a lot of people around us were having that problem. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a new genre of game that you play uh, while you walk around the world. I'm not sure how, how close you are to that, but you, you're, there's some of your games that really have that affordance, you know. Uh, nightlife and, and culture and I think Ingress is one of these where you, you play the game as you walk around the world mm -hmm. or move around the world or fly or drive um, and the Google Glass is sort of giving us a little more taste of that future where we're going to play games as we mm -hmm. walk around and interact with people and interact with things and and you're going to have to play games with us to get us to try those new things so I'm really interested in how you're thinking and, and where this uh, whole genre is going to evolve. But first, let's talk about what, what you built so far. Uh, okay. What, 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 do you, what do you have on your <laughs> iPhone there? Uh, so this is uh, the V1 of your extra life. We just launched it about uh, six weeks ago. Uh, right now, when you open the app, you get into the challenge tab. In the challenge tab, you get to choose a category. Uh, right now, we launched with five categories. We just released the geek, uh, geek category last week. So let's say you're in really interested into culture. Well, you tap on culture and you get a list of challenges. It starts with the easy ones and it gets harder and harder as you make progress. Uh, as you can see, I have like three uh, challenges that are completed already. I have some available and some of them are locked. Tell me about some of these challenges. What, okay. What, what okay. Are some of them? Uh, when, I, when you tap on a challenge, you get a small description. This one is called And the Winner Was. And the goal of that challenge is to watch a movie that won a Best Picture Oscar before 1980. So it's just like to explore a cultural jungle instead of always watching the same TV shows like Try Something New. Yeah. And when you're ready, well, you just tap on the, on the button here and you get a small camera. You can take a picture, add a filter to make it look beautiful. Um, and then you can, uh, you can add a small caption to explain what you did, share it on social media. So I won't actually complete a challenge because okay. this isn't exactly a movie. And that, that helps all of the contextual systems because you're encouraged to share something mm -hmm. about yourself. Oh, I really liked uh, yeah. this movie that came out in the 1950s. Well, that tells the systems more about who you are, right? Exactly. And also, what's cool is like as soon as you uh, submit a picture, it goes pending, and then the community has to vote on it. So, it's it also acts as a discovery mechanism. We called it the tribunal. And uh, in the tribunal, you get random proof assigned to you, and you just vote on them. You can unlock stuff like cool badges. We have a lot of gamification in all the subsystems of the app. Uh, so this challenge like Star Wars, just Star Trek, Show Your Allegiance. This is one of the geek challenge. Yep. So this guy is like, I'm Star Trek, I did the move. So you just like, like it or approve it. And then when approved reaches a certain threshold, well, it's either approved or rejected. If it's, uh, if it's approved, well, you get new challenges. If it's rejected, you have to do it again. Yep. And then as soon as it's approved, well, it goes into the live feed where we can see what other people have been doing. 
Uh, it's an asymmetrical follow system, so you can follow people straight from the feed by tapping that button here. Yeah. So uh, gaming is really interesting, I, and I, I'm not a big gamer. I, I like uh, lots of apps that look like food spotting. Mm -hmm. I see a food app there. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just be straightforward and put my food in. But most people aren't like that. They're, they're not the uh, quantified self people, right? Mm -hmm. They're not wearing sensors. They're not wearing Google <laughs> Glass yet. They're not putting in every meal into Instagram or into food spotting or something mm -hmm. like that. So I think, but there's a lot of people out there who play, who like playing games and mm -hmm. like playing games in, in the real world. Where do you think you're taking this? What, you know, and are you going to have a series of real world games that are going to start building a system about me? Yeah, well, well, the whole point is to get really contextual at some point. The whole point is to get enough data to know who you are, what you like, where you are, so you can get really relevant challenges that will make your life better, get you to get out of your routine. So let's say I'm a 25 years old male and I drop by San Francisco, well, I get challenges that are really relevant to me being there. Very cool. Um, so uh, keep showing me around. Right? Cool, I, cool. I want to see, uh, like nightlife, what, what do I get okay. in the nightlife? Uh, so in the nightlife tree, the very first challenge is to do a phone stack. It starts with like, uh, we felt like people are getting really, really like always on their phone and conversation get boring. So the first challenge is to do a phone stack. You take a picture of it, you submit it, and you put your phone on top. Uh, we have challenges like uh, taste of Japanese. So that means you're out, you're trying to get people to Talk, yeah. get together at a bar. Yeah, exactly. Which uh, means get off the couch and get get to a bar, get mm -hmm. your friends there and build a stack of phones and, and get off your phone, yeah. which is sort of ironic, right? Trying to get people <laughs> yeah. off their phone with a phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, I, mean, I mean, we really use this app as a tool to get people to live more magic moments. Yeah. And we have like, uh, this challenge is called Late Night Eel. And the thing is like, uh, eat a very healthy uh, late night meal. You know, things like that, like taste a Japanese yeah. drink, uh, visit the crowd. So this, this is going to be popular with South by Southwest next year, I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we really plan on being there. You know, yeah. are you going to have a South by Southwest challenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, you know, because a lot of those fit, fit right in after yeah. drinking all night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> although th there's not many healthy restaurants. There's, I think there's the uh, Pancake House, right? And there's a pizza place yeah. on this on 6th Street, so you, your challenges will have to be customized mm -hmm. to, yeah, of course. to that thing. Uh, we already had a big partnership with one of the biggest music festivals in Canada called Festival de Québec. It's in the French-speaking part of Canada. And uh, it was really cool. We did 11 challenges with them, stuff like uh, go, watch, uh, go see the show of an artist that is 20 years older or 20 years younger. Uh, we had stuff like take a picture of your shoes after a really hardcore show. So it was really cool. Like Thousands of challenges were completed. It, was, it creates a lot of organic content for a brand too. That's really interesting that a, a brand or an experience could use it to encourage different kinds yeah, of yeah. Uh, pictures. A winery might use that, a mm -hmm. ski resort might use that, a, a, a resort like the Brits and Hatton mm -hmm. Bay could use that. The whole point yeah. is to create a really like relevant experience for both people and the brand. Like right now, I think brands are looking to engage people on mobile. They do it with like tools that aren't exactly effective like bannering like ads into newsfeed and we really want people to be engaged in a cool way like go visit the crappiest bar you can find sponsored by Purell you know stuff like that that will make it like really relevant for the brands and people won't be like mm, what is this doing there all games are uh, fads uh, and what I mean by that is uh, if you get into a game you know whether it be Dungeons and Dragons or Monopoly mm -hmm. it's interesting for a while and then you, you, you're really hardcore into it and then you, you drop off right now the game of the moment is Minecraft right mm -hmm. I watch all of my ki my kids <laughs> are totally into it and in a year I doubt they'll be into it the way they are right now mm -hmm. how are you gonna uh, make sure that the game is interesting and relevant on the long term and doesn't just mm -hmm. have that fad behavior the whole point of this game is to actually get you to try new thing in life. So it's really diverse first. It's not always the same thing over and over again. It's not like uh, shooting angry birds. Yeah, yeah exactly, games. exactly. Plus, uh, we've been releasing new categories every month. So we'll come with the fitness tree, the traveling tree. So this is one way to keep people just like engaged and wanting to try new things. But the whole like the like big vision is really to make it contextual. So you have your own game uh, built for yourself all the time. So you really get what's the best for you. and. It's not exactly a game, it's more like game mechanics around trying new things. Yeah. So I think we really can, how, uh, sorry. How do you make it something fun? Because, uh, you know, I had food spotting and okay, mm. that's sort of fun, there's a couple of points. This seems a lot better thought out on how to make something fun. What are some of the game mechanics that you're using? Uh, well, the main one is progression, of course. So every time you complete a challenge, you unlock new ones and the, like difficulty gets really uh, like slightly more, I mean, 
it's slightly more difficult every time, but like slightly more interesting too. So it's more and more engaging every time. Uh, we also have badges. I can show you a bunch of badges we have, uh, depending on like if you're a really uh, hardcore curator. So if you're always in the tribunal voting on stuff, you can get the lucky badge, which is a random drop. It drops every thousand proof or proof someone gets it. Uh, we have stuff like more linear or like judge 500 proof. Uh, level up, uh, this one doesn't have that many badges. But uh, yeah, like every time you complete a easy challenge, medium challenge, and hard challenge, you get a new badge. We also have titles. Titles are more linked to the progression in the app. So uh, every time your name appears, you get the title under it. So this guy has like the casual party goer because he's done like nightlife challenges. He also has uh, the festival goer because he unlocked that uh, title at the festival I was talking about. So he yeah. completed all the challenges. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of mechanics. Who do you think your competitor is? Your competitor, the more traditional apps like the like the food spotting or the Yelps or the you know the apps that we all pull out whenever somebody says, hey, we should go try something new tonight. You know, we all try to look for mm -hmm. for this. Is it that? Is is that the competition or is we it have we have different game? competitions. We have really direct competition. Uh, competitors who are really in the same space as us. Like uh, it's more about like one to one. Like clash your friend to do something. There's that app called Clash where you have to like, uh, hey, why don't you drink five espresso or something like that? They, they have an interesting concept, good execution too. But it's I feel it's different. Like it's more jackassish stuff. It's it's not exactly what we're aiming for. The philosophy behind the product is different. Uh, but you also have, of course, uh, competition in space like that, like discovering stuff, uh, traveling apps, and uh, also self-improvement app, which are like kind of are in kind of R and R space, but not exactly. It's more about the fun and also trying new things that are relevant to you. Not exactly like, hey, I want to climb Everest or something like that. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, as we get more sensors, mm -hmm. I, I have a new sleep sensor that's coming out, and I, I'm watching it. <laughs> But it's changing my behavior because mm -hmm. I'm—I know I'm being studied. So now I'm trying to see: can I uh, not sleep? Does it <laughs> does it really show yeah. when I'm tired and, and getting my performance is getting impaired, mm -hmm. or if I get a lot of sleep, does it show me that? Uh, you know, yeah. I'm, in other words, because it's studying me, I'm changing my behavior. Mm -hmm. How are you going to change people's behavior by being studied? That, that's really cool. Like so far, we've been getting like. That's what's cool about this product is we make a real world impact. Like so far, we're just looking at like the altruism tree. Altruism is really, a, the tree like philosophy is different from the other. It's more about like changing philosophy? the world. Philosophy? How, uh, uh, how do you say that? <laughs> what's, I, I, your, what's your uh, accent by the way? Uh, French. French, yeah. French. French, yeah, like Quebec French. Yeah. I, I caught on, it wasn't, it wasn't like Loic who runs uh, it, it, Le Web. It wasn't French yeah. French. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, not, yeah it's, it's Canadian French. I love yeah. Quebec by the way, it's a great place to live. <laughs> So yeah, in the altruism tree, the goal is to change the world around you. And it's really cool to see people actually go and donate blood because you have a challenge that asks them like go donate blood and see them like sign their uh, organ donor cards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like all these things, like people will not actually do this without being like challenged to. This is what's really cool, like uh, donate old clothes. Most yeah. of the time people have really old clothes and they just like stay there and do nothing. And we we had like hundreds of people actually go and donate clothes. I better not show this on camera, but <laughs> I am a donor. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. So you can get people to change their behavior just by playing games. Yeah, with exactly. Them. And there's also the social value because it's a social network. Uh, so like just see having your friends see what you're doing, like what you're achieving, also incentivize people to actually try new things too. Cool. Yeah. How are you guys funded, and who's working? In the uh, company? We're only four founders. We had a small seed round back in January. Uh, we used it to hire two iOS developers, and we've been working on this as a really, really small team for quite a long time. Yeah. Uh, right now, we've been in the valley for uh, about three weeks. We're fundraising at the moment. Yeah. yeah. And you're on iOS only. Are, are you going to build for the other platforms? Yeah, yeah, of course. We, we've been getting like ten requests a day to build it on Android. Yeah, like, yeah. It's crazy. I got an Android phone, so yeah, yeah. I have to give everybody credit because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using iPhone anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it makes sense still to build first for iPhone and then move to the other platform. Yeah. Well, well, it, it was just a matter of like, all of us had iPhones, we really felt like it was a good platform and of course Android is an awesome platform too and we want to build on it too, it's just a matter of resources at the moment. Yeah. Um, well, cool. So. Uh, uh, how many games are you going to roll out over time? Or, you know, are you thinking of a game every six months or, or okay, do you uh, not think about it like that? Right now, uh, it's cool because like, we have a lot of flexibility. We're going to release the fitness tree soon and we're also coming with a challenge of the week, which is a time frame challenge. Uh, the, whole goal is, the whole goal is to create an habit, like slowly creating an habit out of like 
hey, what, I, what, what could I do this week? So every week people will re receive like a, a newsletter with like three personalized challenges for them plus the challenge of the week. So the whole point is like slowly like get them to when they wake up, just check the app and what could I do today? Like if I go to the grocery store, what could I be cooking? And yeah. It'll be really interesting. I, you know, Google Glass is pretty early because there's no customers yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be interesting over the next year mm -hmm. to watch it if you can make the move from smartphones to Google Glass because uh, the, the affordance here is very different. You're not touching it. You're not, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you might be looking at things and using your eye to do something. So the game will be very different. But it'll be interesting. Are you thinking at all like how to explore uh, with the Google Glass? And yeah, well, of course, like uh, all these devices are really interesting for our product. Um, well, as soon as we get more into context, right now it's pretty much like uh, it's a game that's pretty static for everyone, so everyone gets the same challenge. But as soon as we get into context, these devices will make a lot more sense. Yeah. Well, cool. Where do I get the game and learn more about you guys? Uh, well, it's on the App Store and like all of the countries around the world. Uh, we're also at urexpolife.com. We're on Facebook, really active on Facebook, and really active on Twitter too. Very so, cool. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming out and talking to me about the future of real life games. <laughs> Thanks a lot.